This is episode 189-ish, or maybe it's 188 part two. I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it, but it is a Rhinebeck recap for future Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome to watch it, but this is more of a, a, while it's fresh in my mind, let me document for me what was so great about Rhinebeck this year that I wanna make sure I do again next year. Uh, <laughs> I had a great time watching the Chrissy Glass video, Christy Glass video about Rhinebeck 2018, the night before we went, and that served as a great reminder of all the places I wanted to hit, of what I didn't want to make sure, what I wanted to make sure I didn't miss, and um, just sort of a refresher. And I feel like this would be a great thing for me to have for myself, given my memory lapses. So. Here I am sitting down, mother of dragons, to, uh, I mean sons, <laughs> to share a bit about my purchases, a bit of what we did, what went well, what didn't went well. So, ran back recap, 2018 style, right away. First off, let me say that Steve and I left Saturday afternoon after soccer, swimming and soccer in the morning. Roland scored four out of the five goals that his team scored that day. So that was really exciting. We left on a high note. The boys stayed with my parents. Steve and I drove to some place in New York. Um, we ended up being 45 minutes or so away from Rhinebeck proper. Uh, stayed, used his hotel points from all of his travel. So that was great. And um, to a free hotel, they upgraded us to a king suite, which was really nice to have all this space and a kitchen. And like, we weren't planning on any of it, but it was nice to have. Sorry, I want to show you them. my my sporty day. This is a rest day for me. So no makeup, no hair, no nothing. Just recover from the weekend. Um, so we stayed there. We went out. We stayed in Coxsackie. That's where we were. Yeah, I know. And we went out to the Cask and Trasker, Trasker and Flasker, something. Um, it was a. It was online reviewed as, because we did a, a lot of searching around, was reviewed as a great little local watering hole and that's precisely what it was. They had this stuff called koja, which is like buffalo sauce with parmesan and garlic that they put on everything. It was very delicious. Uh, I think you have to like buffalo sauce though to like that, which I do, which I do totally love buffalo sauce. So we enjoyed that. We had some nachos. Steve had the veggie burger. We went there mainly because they had vegetarian options. Uh, the drinks were very strong, the cocktails, <laughs> so much so that my waitress was sweet and went back and uh, had her put more apple cider in mine because I, I couldn't drink it. It was so strong. So a, a pretty good experience. Is it a destination that I need to go back to? No, but they were nice. They were sweet. It was a good place, a uh, good local place. So we did that. The hotel had a great um, buffet breakfast thing in the morning, omelets, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so I got to have toast and omelet and a, and a Southwest omelet and I was very happy and we were full and we had coffee and so very economical start to the weekend and we hit the road and we started driving and as sometimes happens when you're in a car in the morning after having two cups of coffee and you weren't really in your regular routine, one of us had to go to the bathroom and I had to go now. And so in looking for a place to go to the bathroom, we missed our exit and we actually drove an extra half an hour. So we got back on going north and we should have been going south, other way around. We drove south further than we should have and then, anyway, so it ended up that we went over the big Hudson bridge between, starts with a K, Kingston and Rhinecliff or Rhinebeck. Um, that's Max ear that you're seeing. So we went over that big, beautiful bridge. I love the bridge. The bridge, first thing in the morning, is one of the uh, beautiful sights.
nights. We didn't make it downtown. So that is for sure one of my mah, mah, about the weekend. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, keeping you awake. Um, I love driving through the cute little downtown of Rhinebeck. But because Steve and I were doing the trip, just the two of us without the kids, and in a 24-hour window, um, there just wasn't a lot of extra time for things that weren't like highest priority. We saw, what did we do? We bought our tickets online ahead, so got a little discount, and then we just walked straight in, no lines, no waitings, got there at 9.30 on Sunday morning, so that was a good time. Um, if we'd gotten there at nine, I don't know if we would have had to wait. It was weird being there without my boys. So I have, since Roland's been born, so he's seven, so six years, I think I've gone four times in those six years and he's been with me. And so it's just strange not to have the boys and people are coming up to me saying, where are the boys? Where's the family? Where's the boys? Um, it was really nice to get away and have mommy daddy time. Like we figured it out the last time we were alone for an overnight that we went away. Like we have date nights locally, but that we went on an adventure, um, was when we went to see fallout boy in September 2013. <laughs> so it's been almost, no, it's been five years since we had a, a date night away. So that was really fun for us. So there's some of both. Like I really, there were things that I did that I was like, oh, the boys would love to see this. And then there were things that it was like, I can go to the potty by myself and I don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing. <laughs> that makes you don't realize when you have, um, just the amount of your brain space that's being taken out by that four and seven year old, their needs and taking care of them. So a bit of both, right? So w next year I was talking to Megan, um, just run it. And I said to her, you know, I can't do this again without the boys, but now that I'm thinking about it, now that it's not in the moment and I'm just missing them, like I'm not away from my boys. That's not something that happens a lot now that I'm not working. You know, I used to travel with work, but now I don't. So anyways, um, I told her I, I would ne I would never go without the boys again. I might go without the boys. <laughs> so there's that. Um, it definitely made it more economical in terms of food for us. So where were the artichokes? I don't know. I, I didn't go in 2017 and I didn't see any mention on them on Christie's video. And so I don't know if the artichoke French's people are gone, but that's like, usually I walk in and I get it right away because I don't want to wait in the lines. So mm, she said, get the falafel. I didn't realize how long the falafel line would turn into on a Saturday because it was dead when we got there. It, Steve was like, what is going on? Where is everybody? Within a couple hours it picked up, but people aren't rushing to get there to beat the crowds the way they do on a Saturday morning. Like, fine, it's Sunday, take it easy. We went only on Sunday. Did I mention that? And so going only on Sunday, um, I missed out on some colors. I will say I'm gonna go through each of the booths that I hit that were important to me. I did not get anything at Galesar. That was the booth that I felt like was the most picked over. Um, some of my color choices at Miss Babs weren't what I would have wanted. Dragonfly fibers, I was able to get the Rhinebeck color. I feel like I bet a third of the booths that I purchased from, I could feel that something was missing. And like I went into decadent fibers. I've knit two sweaters with her yarn. I didn't buy any this time, but almost her whole booth was orange. Like I walked in and I was like, whoa, orange. Cause clearly she'd been picked over all the other colors. So same thing with Briar Rose. I didn't see that, that vast um, color flow that I normally see in her booth color options. So that's the only down part about Sunday. And trust me, there is still plenty of yarn to buy that I came home a very happy girl. And I don't see a reason to deal with those crowds again on Saturday. Like, henceforth, forth, I shall never go on a Saturday morning. Or if I go, I'm not gonna go in the booths. I'm just gonna be going to sit on the hillside and, and socialize. It's not gonna be about 
purchasing because I really, I, I couldn't even do primrose. I wanted to go in there. I'd heard great things, speckled yarn. It looked gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But I could only see from here up of the booth because there was a constant flow of people. We went by three times on Sunday. The last time being around two o'clock and I still couldn't get in the booth. And so if I can't get in, I don't buy. That's just, I'm not gonna battle too much. So um, that's kind of my Sunday rundown in a nutshell. All the, we got coffee, we got pizza, we walked right up to all the food vendors that we wanted, got what we wanted, except for the falafel. Like I said, that line was long. Uh, Steve missed the fluting guys, the I don't know if they're Ecuadorian. Um, it was an Ecuadorian troupe that used to come to Rockland where we grew up. So that's why I always think of those guys with the flutes and the Andean sweaters as Ecuadorian, but whatever, um, they weren't there. So that does add a lot to the atmosphere. So that was missing on Sunday, but otherwise, great, great. I didn't see as many people as I would normally see though. But um, I think I missed, if there was a podcaster meetup on Sunday, I think I missed it because we went by at 1.30. Like we were in a booth and I noticed it was one and I said, oh, let me finish here and then we'll go by. So we went by at 1.30 and it was, there was no one there. So I don't know what happened with that or if that's only on Saturdays. And so I forfeit it if I only go on Sunday, but I'm okay with that. So this year, unlike other years, I mapped out here are the booths, here's their location. These are my must sees. I don't have to necessarily buy, but I must see. And so that was great because I messaged that chart and I made an Excel chart color coded by building over to Steve and he was responsible. So instead of carrying around the brochure and looking and maybe missing a vendor, I did my research ahead of time, a week ahead of time. It was perfect. It worked out great because he would say, okay, we're near this building. Let's go in and get that. Or I want to go in the animal barn 27. Why don't you go in 26 and do your thing? So we did it that way. So that was great. I will definitely do that again. I also had the schedule of events and we saw the sheep. through the animals and he loves the animals. That's his favorite part. And so normally he would entertain the boys with that. So that's fine. He did it on his own. We watched Leaping Llamas and I wasn't sure because we'd only been there for an hour and a half at that point when we sat down. And I was like, oh, am I really gonna give up my shopping and like socializing time to be sitting here? And I'm so glad we did. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It's about half an hour. You should always make time for Leaping Llamas. The place gets packed. It was the one time I had on my 850 LLB coat. This is the only year that I've not been sweaty or freezing. I have either been one or the other. And this year with that coat on and a lightweight t-shirt underneath and a shawl, I was perfect temperature. So that was great, except my little fingers were cold. I had my fingerless mitts. I wouldn't want anything but fingerless mitts because otherwise you're taking them off and putting them on all the time. So yay to fingerless mitts, but sitting in that for the um, alpacas, leaping, alpa leaking, leaping llamas, that was the only time my fingers warmed up. And I was like, I'm good. I don't need to have these on. So Lots of people were sitting there knitting. It's a good time to just catch up with people and recharge. Uh, we had a great time with that. I
Oh, big guy. <laughs> All right. Big goat. <laughs> We saw they were going on the um, sheep, not, well, we saw sheep herding. That doesn't interest me so much. I, I've, I have too much empathy for those poor sheep that are afraid of the dog. Like, it really bothers me. I saw it somewhere that the sheep are, like, petrified of the dog. They think it's a wolf. And so I'm like, no, I can't watch them. So not that. But the, um, the frisbee, the show, I don't know what they are. They're like. There's some kind of dogs. Anyways, those people that come every year and do the dog show with like five or six different dogs, different breeds that do different things. Um, we missed them because it was just so cold and windy. It was 40 degrees, maybe 38 degrees, and there was wind and just didn't want to stand still and watch that. So next year, definitely make time to see those dogs because I missed it this year. Like I've, I've, we've done it years before and it, it's a fun, funny event. Mac, we are not going to sit here and scratch on a bag. I know it's a fun toy, but we're not going to. So that's the overall experience. Aztec hot chocolate, um, Mexican hot chocolate, whatever they call it. It's like crack. Get it. It's really good. <laughs> Steve and I shared a cup of that in the morning and that's it so when we arrived we saw Amy Beth first thing actually I saw her daughter and I was like that girl getting out of that truck looks like Amy Beth's daughter <laughs> wasn't stalkery at all and it didn't make her daughter completely uncomfortable when I said that <laughs> but I got my big Amy Beth hug so that was good it felt like let me tell you because I got up that morning at the hotel I normally, when I get up, it's very slow. I end up laying in bed for 10, 20 minutes waiting for my body to like be less painful and uh, less stiff. And I didn't. It was like Christmas morning. I woke up, I jumped out of bed, and I went running to the bathroom. And I was like, it's right back morning, it's right back morning, it's right back morning. And so I was like that in the car. I was so excited. It's right back morning. And we get there and I get out of the car and there's Tova and then there's Amy Beth and it was like a unicorn on Christmas. <laughs> so I got my Amy Beth hug right away. Good start to the day. And then we went off and started shopping. So I'm just going to show you what I got. I think that's the best way to do it, right? Okay. So first up. Um, so I told you next time I'll hit Primrose. Next time I'll hit Briar Rose. I didn't get to see them. Um, I s walked through Misty Mountain Farm. Their booth, they're going to go on my knit list for next year. Future Stephanie, write them down. Their prices were amazing. Their colors were gorgeous. It was too early in the day for me when I saw them. And I had a limited budget. And so I was like, okay, I'm hitting my must-haves first. And if I have money left over, I'll buy more. So unfortunately, I wasn't planning to see them, but I will plan to see them next year. Um, I went into Gail's Art. I love Gail's Art. I usually buy something from Gail's Art. Um, I love visiting with Gail. She's a sweetheart of a lady. And she wasn't there. I don't know if someone was, like it was lunchtime or what was going on, but she wasn't there. The booth was pretty picked over. So I didn't buy anything at Gail's Art. And I missed, obviously, the Needles Up and Andy untangled the Friday adventures at Rhinebeck. So when I got home, I treated myself and did the pre-order for the Fat Squirrel 
bag that, with a fabric that's dyed by Gail's art because I didn't get to give Gail any love at the show. So I felt like that was a little bit of Gail, Gail love there. Um, I told you I saw the dogs. I missed the boys in Artichoke. Okay, um, here's where I didn't go <laughs> that um, I would like to go. They made my list, but I didn't purchase anything. So I uh, walked through Neighborhood Fiber Company. They are an aspirational shop for me every year. I've seen them at Rhinebeck at least three, maybe four times. And every time I go in there and I want some, and uh, my good friend Heather talks about them all the time. She uses their products. She is totally in love with them. And I see her stuff and it's gorgeous. And I want it. I want to knit with it. But then I get sticker shock every time I go in that booth. And so I don't buy anything because I'm really trying to limit single skeins at fingering weight. I'm trying to buy DK because then you could do a color work or you could do a hat or cowl. I wear those accessories a lot more than I wear socks or shawls. So nothing there. Uh, flying goat, we missed it. Or I, I don't know, it didn't connect this time, but I, I do intend to see them again. Harrisville, uh, I think I noted where they were. They were definitely on my must stop list, but they are also a New Hampshire yarn company. I think that's what happened. I went through and I realized maybe it was Bartlett, but Bartlett's not New Hampshire. No, Bartlett's Maine. So it's Harrisville that's New Hampshire. I live in New Hampshire. I can go visit that mill during an open mill or something. I can give them my patronage another time. So I didn't buy any of them. Uh, Dirty Dye Works. I wanted some of theirs. Boston based yarn company. It, you know, we read the names and enjoyed looking at the colors, but it didn't work out this time. Knit Spot, I was, anxious to see I did not realize um the yarn in that booth would be mostly natural I'm not a natural knitter <laughs> I mean I am a natural knitter it just comes to me but I prefer brightly colored yarns so that one I passed over but I will check it out again next year future Stephanie note that down so there those are my notes I took too many pages of notes for you. So now we can get to the good stuff, looking at the yarn. I gave myself a challenge driving to Rhinebeck. Well, before driving. I said to myself, what, five days before Rhinebeck, I was gonna finish, try to finish. I was not going to try and finish my shift shawl. Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. It's beautiful. I've been using Feederbrook Farm. I love that yarn. I've fallen more and more in love with it, the more of it I use. Um, I said I wasn't going to try and finish it for Ryan Beck, and then I realized how perfectly it matched with my, my Ella Bean coat, and I wasn't going to be showing a sweater, and so that could be coming out, and it's these gorgeous colors. Last time you saw it, I was in the yellow, and I said it would get better. It did, in fact, get better. Now we're going into some pinks. And so I have, <laughs> I had one section to go. Saturday night, we're sitting in the hotel room watching Big Bang Theory, because I, I like to do that in hotels. I don't know why. Uh, well, I like the show anyways, but and it always seems to be on. And I'm knitting in the chair, and I fell asleep in the chair knitting. And Steve was like, hey, go to bed. <laughs> so I gave up. It wasn't going to be done. And even with a little extra car riding yesterday morning, it still wasn't going to be done. And then I drove some of the way home so he could sleep. And then he drove and I slept. And so it's still not done. But I just have two rows of patterning to go and then the bind off and then blocking and then seaming. So it oh, almost made it to being done. This is what it would have looked like. But instead, I wore one of my Goldfinch shawls, which is by Andrea Mowry. I realized in my packing that um, I don't weave in my ends on a lot of things. Like, it's okay to wear a sweater around the house with your ends hanging out. Or that shawl, the Goldfinch, the pink and purple one. Pink, purple, and orange with red. It's very neon. Um, it's okay to wear it around the house. <laughs> but occasionally during the day I'd see an end and it was like oh tuck that in tuck that in so didn't finish my race to Rhinebeck but it will be done for the next show for sure um so once we got there I don't know what I purchased first yes I do so oh well oh well I had no idea as I was in their booth and I talked to I don't know the names of the people 
Um, I talked to the man. He's very nice. Is this from them? I don't know. Sorry. This has to be from them because everybody had that hat on. Mount Ra Rainier, Moonrise, Hernandez, Taos, Adventures in Knitting. Anyways, they gave me this free card with this beautiful. Everyone was wearing, there were a bunch of those hats in the booth that's made from a 50-50 cotton wool blend, so it would make for a nice breathable hat. Um, I was walking around there from Pennsylvania, but their stuff, their yarn, at least this particular weight, which is the sport weight, is milled in Maine. And I think it's milled in Saco, which is where my parents used to live. And my dad would say, Stephanie, there's a mill that does yarn. You should go see it. And I was like, I don't know a yarn brand, but anyways, I need to do a field trip <laughs> and go look and see. But I stood there and I hemmed and hawed and then these three spoke to me. So that's pretty, pretty true on. These two actually spoke to me first. I really like the, the deep maroon, 100%. Superwash, organic merino. I really like the maroon and the, the like slate purple. I don't know what color to call that. What color do they call it? Appalachian stone and the maroon is called Juneberry. And then I just put brook trout in next to it and I thought it looked beautiful. And also brook trout goes really well with my, my cartons. These are the same cartons that are in my living room. <laughs> it's the, uh, because the open concept house, the living room and dining room and kitchen. I have all the same coordinating curtains. But anyways, those are my oval. So some sort of color work. It's very soft. Something around my neck, something on my head. I don't know. But that was exciting for me. Um, we made our way over to White Birch Fiber Arts, which I have, I got two skeins from her at Stitches east when it was in Connecticut the one time we went and I was so excited to get some then um and I think I have does this rainbow make my butt look fat or something along those lines she has like four or five different adorably named rainbow themed colorways so I didn't buy one because I was pretty sure I had one and then I went over and saw that she had these um they're coordinating whatever they match perfectly and it's like six or eight color repeat of a 75 25 merino wool nylon two matching 50 gram skeins 462 yards it was a little pricey for a skein of fingering weight sock yarn but then when I saw the yardage to 460 yards and knowing how manual it is to get to achieve all those stripes I went in for it uh, you know is this color at all surprising that I would buy that no of course not um, Amy from Canon Hand Dyes was in the booth. I think they were sharing it and I really wanted something of her, but pretty much the only thing I saw were kits and they were pretty, um, large luxurious kits. So they were a little beyond my price point. I have a skein of, oh, I'm trying to remember, Sir Richard, it's from Downton. It's named after the newspaper mogul that Mary kind of, oh no, Edith goes along with for a while. Anyways, it's this gorgeous yellow black over dye. It has several layers. And she was nice. She was talking to uh, a lot of people in that booth were there just to talk to her. So, but I was excited to get a skein of white birch fiber arts. Maybe I should write Canon hand dyes. Future Stephanie, note that down. Canon hand dyes. You want to hit them next year. Um, I've been loving knitting my shift. And so next up was Feeder Brook Farm. And I went in and there was definitely a color, a color lacking in that booth, but that's okay because the colors that she had were gorgeous, but it, it definitely felt like a lopsided rainbow. Do you know what I mean? Like the blues and the greens were mostly gone and the colors that were left were the reds and roses and towards that end of the color spectrum and I know from looking at her website that she's not that she knits across a variety of colors so she must have been picked over but I talked to her and told her how much I love the one I'm working on now and so I meant to buy the same yarn entropy 
DK. Yay! So this is the milk and honey. I didn't realize. I have been working with the 100% blue faced luster, I believe. So the milk and honey, and she explained to me all the background of how this um, yarn came into existence. There are a limited number of skeins, and it's a merino alpaca milk fiber, 260 yards. Each skein does that gradient, does the gradation. So that's what I love about it. Not only does it look hand, hand spun, right, with the barber pulling, but the colors shift through it. And so it looks so beautiful. So there is another shift for sure in my future or something that involves this as the base color and then a solid uh, something for color work. So there's the purple teal, I wanna call it, purple teal rose. And then this one's a little bit outside of my color palette, more of a sage, rose, purple, peach. So. Yay, two of these, and they're so soft. But, um, so there's that, DK weight, love them, love them, love them. I hit, we had to stop at the dollar store <laughs> because I forgot my needle, my, my pouch, Notions pouch. And so I thought we could go to the dollar store and since there wasn't a Walmart near us and get a mending kit at least so that I could seam up my cowl when I still thought I could finish it. But we got the boys a couple dollar, dollar store, dollar puzzles. Super happy. I'm glad that it just worked out that way that we came home with something for them. Normally I would not have thought of that. So they were excited to get that. So Spider-Man was one of the purchases. Uh, fiber optics. So they are definitely on my list. I knit my mom a shawl with their cashmere yarn which is an 80 10 10 cash merino nylon super wash wool super wash wool is the 80. i knit her one in brown it's this beautiful coffee color and um i knew i wanted another skein from them i have seen them twice since sorry i'm shaking you and i've been looking for a color that would speak to me because this one will be for me and so what color speaks to me of course they had five or six different shades of teal, sapphire, jade green, like these great shades of green, blue, blue, green. And um, another lady and I were looking at them together. And then this color uh, brought all the colors together and incorporated a little bit of black in it. So knowing that this, I mean, can you see how drapey this is? How many yards is this? 420 yards, super drapey. Love it, love it, love it. $29 wasn't too pr badly priced. And this is called Blackbird, which is totally like <laughs> Mallard. Would have been more Mudbird of choice to uh, highlight the colors in this yarn, but it is gorgeous. So there was that. Um, I went into Bartlett. So they were my last stop, Bartlett Yarns. So they are from Harmony, Maine, which who knew? I grew up in Rockland, Maine, which is half an hour, an hour. Wow, this is rustic. <laughs> so Amy Beth tells me she loves Bartlett yarns. And I opted to go for a kit of the sport weight skeins. This is the Fresh Berries kit. Um, it was only $13 and I was down to the end of my budget. And that was kind of why I bought this. So it's four... Uh, one ounce skeins and so it's um, 420 yards so great great price point I really like the colors I had thought this would be and I talked to the guy about making a hat out of it but I can't really see it for that so maybe it'll have to be a yoke on something that's knit with a softer yarn sport weight color work that could be pretty right and a yoke you could say oh I could smell the delicious sheepy neck so um, Bartlett, Harrisville seem very similar to me and what they make. I don't know. I'm not a spinner, but that's my initial take on it. So I purchased one, but not the other. So there are those. And yes, they are very crunchy, <laughs> but they are lovely, soft, saturated colors. So, yay, swirl. So there was that. Um, before that, obviously, I had to hit the piece de resistance, the reason, 
I go to Rhinebeck because I don't live in the South and this is the only time I get to see Miss Babs. I've had um, a not great experience purchasing from Babs online. So just in terms of choosing a, the skein, I bought a sweater's worth and the three skeins of Yowza did not match and I still haven't knit them. And so I just vowed at that moment that I would only buy Miss Babs in person because I love Miss Babs. I love their yarns. I love their color sense, but I want to be the one to pick it. So that said, they were pretty picked over in terms of, um, I mean, the booth was full, 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 but it was a lot of the more muted colors that you would want in a sweaters worth of yarn. It was not so much in the highly variegated um, crazy colors that you, I would like for a single skein shawl. Per particularly, I've been wearing my uh, Berlin, which was the color Berlin shawl, or, or it's an infinity scarf that has this great basket weave. The pattern is um, Denver. Denver shawl, Denver scarf, something, because it was cities. I bought it in Rhinebeck, it was called Berlin, and then the pattern was Denver. It's in my projects if you want to see it. But I've been wearing it a lot because it's this gorgeous jewel tones. It's all the jewel tones, and it matches with everything I wear. So I went there thinking, I want to get another color that's similar. So this was the best I could find that didn't have too much white. I didn't want a white-based yarn. White doesn't appeal to me. So this has lots of colors going on that I think in a slip stitched, slip sit, stitch pattern, um, something of that sort, it's going to look amazing. So I wanted, I don't want to do the Denver cowl again, or shawl, whatever it is. I enjoy it. It's an infinity loop. I double wrap it. But even though the ends have two by two rib, I want to say, on both edges, because it was knit this way in the round, and it's a loop that's like that big, it's giant. Um, it still tends to roll on me. And even when I take it off and I fold it, it lays flat. But for some reason, when I'm doing the stretching and wrapping it, the ends want to roll under. So I want to take that stitch pattern and do something else with it. Maybe a shape more like the bandana triangle towel shape of the shift. But there's that. And this is Yauza. Yowza, which she calls a light worsted, 100% merino, 560 yards. So generous, so generous. Steve's eyes bugged out of his head when he saw that I bought two of those, but I had to, I didn't have a choice. And so this is a perfectly Stephanie and her mother color. <laughs> totally is. Like my mom is big on the browns and the autumn colors. And I, of course, love the teals. Um, my, that's, like if you look at my house decor, which my mom helped me do a lot of the color color selection during the renovation, um, this this would be this would sum it up. Our dark hardwood floors, and then our rugs and curtains are that color. So this is beautiful, and I thought it would just be nice. I almost didn't buy it, but I'm glad I did. It would have been one of those. Oh, I wish I had. And then I found this little heels, toes skein, two ply yummy fingering. I tried to find it in a full skein, I couldn't. So I just bought a 133 yards of it, um, which I have lots of their minis, I love them. But this is called Viva. And I love a purple that, or a, a taupe color that leans, or beige, that leans towards purple. And so this is kind of opposite of that. It's a purple that leans, that has those taupes in it. And then there's also really dark blacks. So I could see ordering this one online now that I've seen it in person. Although how do I know that I get one that's as saturated as this? Cause I do really, the, the camera's blowing it out. It's really rich, dark color. So that was fun. Maybe I could order two, we'll see. Maybe I can't order anything because this was my yarn budget for the year. Uh, and then lastly, so this was basically my splurge. I love dragonfly fibers. How much have I knit from them? A few things. I have um, a sweater's worth for one of the boys that I bought from them. Crazy. 
expensive kid sweater and but I haven't knit it yet and then I was happened to be wearing a pair of fingerless mitts out of their yarn the ruby red ruby something ruby slippers that I knit out of their traveler base so I was talking to the sales lady that traveler is my favorite and it was also her favorite and then I proceeded to buy no traveler <laughs> But uh, Valkyrie's also really good. I like that base too. That's their, um... anyways. Okay, so I walked up and they had a whole wall of these great different different bases in this color, which is called the Village of Rhinebeck. So of course I had to get it, souvenir yarn, and they were shocked that there was any left. I will say that the wool silk blend looked the most beautiful in terms of dye absorption, color saturation but this is also very pretty. I didn't want a single ply wool silk. So I ended up getting the Valkyrie in this, which is, uh, I'm gonna say it's a bulky weight, sevens to nines, 200 yards. It's a hat. It, uh, oh look, it looks pretty like that. So is that, although this wouldn't match my, uh, my new coat. So then I looked around a bit and I saw Damsel, which is, I wanna call it their DK weight. It's a four to six needle size, US four to six Damsel, 340 yards, uh, good price point for the yardage. And so I bought this skein because it spoke to me. I went to Into the Wool, Into the Whirl. I love Into the Whirl. There were I wanted some speckled and they didn't have any speckles that spoke to me except one TL one, but it was like mostly white with TL. And anyway, so I didn't do it, but they are definitely on my have to see every year. I was in their club for a year at least. And I walked out of their booth thinking, I just need to rejoin the club. Like they have so many beautiful colors that I can't choose. And so having them send it to me, it's like, oh, this is what I have. It's, it worked perfectly for me with them. Uh, but this Dragonfly Fibers, yes, Dragonfly Fibers is what I'm holding up right here, is gorgeous. And their, um, not their dye technique, but their color, the way that they line up their colors kind of reminds me of Into the World. That's why I thought of that. Uh, this is the last one I got from them, also in Damsel. This one is called Fire in the Evening. I really hope I don't already own this because I feel like I've heard that colorway name. This one was called Sugar Shack. Sugar Shack. So that's this one. So 340 yards. So that's a that's a pretty good bit. So that's it. Those are my Rhinebeck purchases. <laughs> Rhinebeck 2018. That's what happened. That's my story. We drove back. We stopped a couple times at the lovely Massachusetts. Toll plot, not toll plazas, rest areas. I love Massachusetts for that. I think New York, New York's are prettier, um, but they're further spread out or the roads that we were on, the Taconic Parkway doesn't have them. But Massachusetts, it's like every 20 miles, you get some place to stop and eat and pee or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, worked out well, I had a really great time and I love seeing everyone. I wish I could have been more outgoing, <laughs> but I did my best and um, we had a great day, great time. So if you've never been, think about going next year. It's definitely worth it and it's so fun. So take care. I'll see you in a few days with a regularly scheduled show. I just wanted to, while it was fresh in my mind, sit down and recap for future Stephanie what to do next year. That's it. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon. Mwah.